Hello and welcome everyone, it is me the Laval, also known as the Portal Duelist, back for you with another deck profile and this is a very special one indeed because I will be talking about Warrocks. I've um, been testing with this for the last couple of months against friends and a bit online even and I have been having a blast with a very simple deck for modern times, um, to put it that way. And let's get into what these guys really can do. We are starting off the main deck with three of one of your bigger guys in Meaty Oregon. Um, Meaty Oregon can first of all not be destroyed by card effects, which on a 2600 body that uh, has a lot of in archetypal boosts is not really that terrible. Uh, also, you know, as any Warrock will do, they have an archetype when an Earth, uh, they have an effect when an Earth Warrior battles. His effect is that when an Earth Warrior battled this turn, he can attack two monsters your opponent controls and all Warrocks gain 200 until your opponent's end phase. The boost is something shared by all of them if they resolve their effect, but he can also, if he declares an attack, negate that opponent's monster's effects and the activated effects of monsters with the same name on your opponent's field for the rest of the turn, which is really cool. And him being able to swing twice with the boosts can really net you some neat Kills on your opponent's boards. Then another one of the big fellas. We are talking three copies of Warrock Bashilios. During the battle phase in which an Earth Warrior battles, um, you can quick effect, activate this effect. He can attack directly and also he will boost your Warrocks by 200 until the end of your opponent's turn. Then his second effect is that if an Earth Warrior monster is destroyed by battle while he is in graveyard or hand, you can special summon him, but he gets banished when he leaves the field, which is really nice, leads to a really cool interaction with Orpis. And yeah, he's kind of cool. Helps you close out games, your biggest main deck body. Very nice for that. Then to some one-offs. I play a copy of Warrock Skylar. As she gains 100 for each monster your opponent controls, and during a battle phase when an Earth Warrior battled, you can revive a level four, 5 or lower warrior from your graveyard, which is really nice, and she has the boost effect. And also, you know, she locks you into warrock attacks for the rest of the turn. But another one of I am playing is the aforementioned Opis. He, like his other level 5 warrock compadre, can be normal summoned without tributing if all monsters you control are warriors or you control more no monsters. And his effect is that if an earth warrior battles, uh, battles after damage calculation, you can send an Earth Warrior monster from deck to grave, and you know, he then boosts. Uh, the fun interaction being that if you battle with him, you can dump Bashilios, he gets destroyed after damage step, and you can put the Bashilios on the board, which is really cool, and that definitely helps you in getting your bigger bodies onto the field. Then the next level 5 Warrock we are playing two of instead is Mammoud. Just like Orpis, can normal summon him without tributing if all monsters you control are warriors or you control no monsters. And if an Earth Warrior monster battled, you can pop a spell or trap card on the field. Uh, your opponent controls. You can just pop a spell or trap card your opponent controls and he boosts your Warrocks until the end phase. Really cool, gives you some in archetype spell and trap removal, which a clearly going second deck really appreciates. And then kind of the heart and soul of the deck, three copies of Warrock for sure. If an Earth Warrior monster battles while well, he's on the field, you can add a Warrock card from your deck to your hand at the end of damage step, which is a really powerful effect. And, you know, then also the boost. But something that all the level 4 Warrocks share is that if the level 4 Warrocks are removed from your field and sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, effect, you can special summon a level 5 or higher Warrock monster from hand or deck, which is a really nice float ability and can lead you into some nice summons if your opponent can't out your board or outs your board outside of the battle phase. Then we have three Gekdos. He is just a level 4 extender, I guess, because if you if an Earth Warrior monster is normal summoned to your field, you could special them from your hand, which enables a fair bit of access to the rank 4 toolbox, which is very nice. And he also, just like Forsha, will float into a level 5 or higher Warrock if he is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect. Then something I do like running are two copies of Warrock Wento, just to, you know, round out the whole lineup, because uh, her effect is kind of nice, because if an Earth Warrior monster battles, you can pay 800 life points and increase that monster's attack points by 800, 
which kind of helps you get over that 3000 threshold for which you would usually need, usually need uh, one or two boosts, which is very cool, I'd say. And, you know, also the classic level four float into a level five or higher if she leaves the field. Then I think the first time I am showing a playset of a hand trap on the channel, this could be any hand trap you like. Effect Veilers cheap, I like the Effect Veilers, so I run them. Getting into the absolutely amazing field spell, that is Warrock Mountain. This kind of does it all for the deck. On activation, you can add a Warrock monster from deck to hand, and at the start of the battle phase, if you control no monsters, or all monsters you control are warrior monsters, you can special summon a Warrock monster from your hand, which is why you can definitely get away with running this many high-level monsters and not really find yourself bricking because finding a field spell in 2021 is not very hard. Also, if a Warrock monster you control would be destroyed by battle, you can instead destroy this, uh, which is really cool. Does it all, amazing field spell, definitely ties it all together very nicely. We are playing, of course, a one of terraforming to grab it. We are playing a one of monster reborn to revive our monsters. A reinforcement of the army because we're playing warriors and we are playing Regeki Duster because, you know, we want to go second and we want to be able to dismantle our opponent's board as best as we can. Which is the nice part about this deck, you have a lot of space for, you know, good generic staples uh, that you can run because your in archetypal cards don't take up that much space. Next up, we have the quick play spell Warrock Dignity. Uh, if you control a face-up Warrock monster, you can activate one of the following effects. Either when an opponent's monster activates its effect, you negate that effect, or during the battle phase when your opponent activates a spell or trap card, you can a spell, trap card, or monster effect, you can negate that effect. So in the battle phase, you can basically stop your opponent from doing anything. And outside of the battle phase, this gives you a neat way to interrupt your opponent without, you know, taking the effect veiler or maybe other cards you may be running into account, which is really cool. Gives you an archetypal interruption. Really, really nice. Then I am playing two. Warrock Spirit. This is an archetypal revival spell that during the battle phase lets you target a Warrock in your grave and activate one of these effects. You either special summon that target in attack, or it's but its effects are negated and it can't attack directly, or you special summon the target in defense, but the and also the first time each Warrock would be destroyed by battle this turn, it is not destroyed. Keeps you alive on follow-up turns, but in general, I'd say this is something you can also swap out for a good staple card. Uh, I'm playing just one ordeal. This is a continuous spell that, you know, if you activate it, you put three counters on it. And if a Warrock destroys something your opponent controls by battle, you can remove a counter to draw a card. I just think it's cool. But this could probably also be, you know, a generic good staple then I am currently playing three Book of Moon, not only for additional ways to interrupt my opponent, turn one, but also to turn off some interruptions going second. This could most definitely be a broken competitive staple. Um, in my online list, I'm currently using a playset of Dark Ruler no more instead of this, but if you have Forbidden Droplets, you could also run these here. This is just here, you know, because Book of Moon actually isn't terrible especially in this deck. Uh, closing out the main deck are actually two traps. One Warrock Big Blow during the main phase. If a Warrock, if one or more Warrock monster you control, leave the field by an opponent's card effects. You can destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. And a Metaverse, you know, just to more easily access Mountain, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck. Then getting into the extra deck, which shouldn't take too long. We are playing a copy of Heroic Champion Gandiva. You make this with two level 4 warriors. And once per turn, when a level 4 or lower monster would be special summoned to your opponent's side of the field, you can detach a material from this card, destroy the special summon monster. Gives you another really neat interruption. Is also an Earth Warrior, so it has in archetype synergy, which is kind of cool. We then play a Heroic Champion Kusanagi. Takes three level 4 warriors, which could make this a bit tough to make. Um, once per turn, during either player's turn, when the trap card is activated, detach material, negate the activation, destroy it, and he will gain 500, which can make him quite big. Um, but he is also quite the investment for the deck. And following that, we basically have access to the entire rank 4 toolbox. Um, playing a small Utopia package, never hurt anyone. Tornado rank for additional back row removal. Caster for some, you know, uh, monster removal. Light Dragon, Steel Swarm Roach, Digosto Emerald, Gaga Gaga Cowboy. This could also be Abyss Dwellers or any, you know, rank 4 you like. 
or rank 4 you believe is good and playable in your current environment of play. But I'd say, you know, the kind of Utopia package, the Tornado Dragon and the Castle are a bit more mandatory as those are more applicable to a general uh, player base. Then I play one Goki the Power Load Ogre. I uh, didn't consider this at first because I... Um, Sometimes I just I just miss cards, but this is essentially a link for towers uh, that is 2800, which is kind of nice. Also an Earth Warrior, which helps the deck. Actually got this pointed out by someone in the comments under the straight of the toolbox I made on this deck a few weeks ago. Um, so shoutouts to you if you are seeing this profile. Um, he's kind of cool. He's a big tower. So he definitely is Cool. Then we have a Rotten, the Heavenly General. This is a TCG exclusive. It takes two or more monsters of the same type. Once per turn during the standby phase, you can target a phase up once he points to and special summon a level 4 lower monster with the same type from Grave. And at the start of the battle phase, you can target a card your opponent controls, destroy it, which is kind of neat. Also an Earth Warrior, which again, archetype is synergy. Um, I play a Decode Talker. This could probably be the uh, BLS link monster if you have that lying around or if you are playing online. Uh, I did not have, you know, time and money to spend, I think, 30 to 40 euros on a card. Um, so this is also fine. In general, the extra deck is more supposed to kind of support the main deck in this deck because uh, a lot of the stuff is already taken care of in your main deck. I play a copy of Ferocious Flame Swordsman just for, you know, some 500 attack boosts, which is kind of nice, also easy to make. And if he leaves the field, you can add a warrior monster from Graveyard. Uh, target, you can actually special summon a not a warrior non-link warrior monster from graveyard um which is kind of cool and capping off the extra decks just a mrs radiant another easy to make link two in the deck that gives you a neat boost which helps you in the battle phase which is kind of you know the main thing you want to do with this deck but yeah with all this out of the way this uh, deck has definitely surprised me um it's actually a lot of fun playing. It's fairly simple. It's very very straightforward. You just, you know, activate mount and you just put bodies on the board and then you try punching your opponent. It's uh, really straightforward in that case, but I think it's very refreshing in uh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh to have a deck that is, you know, just summon bodies, beat opponent, go game, which is uh, really cool. Really like it. Definitely recommend checking this out and trying this deck out for yourself. If you or haven't already, um, and definitely do not let yourself get deterred by, you know, the giant meme that this deck has become. But yeah, with all this out of the way, definitely let me know th your thoughts on Warrocks as a deck uh, in general in the comments down below. And I will thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.